Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'll be introducing class-based views from Django. So if you like this video, check out the other videos that are similar. This is actually a video from my course called Understanding Django on my website. So you can check that out after you watch this video. And as always, if you have any questions about this video, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time. Now that I've talked about forms, one of the things that you may have noticed is that with forms, you have two things that kind of get handled in each view. You have the post request and you have the get request, and two different things happen depending on whether or not it's a get request. So a potentially more elegant way of writing a view is to use a class in Django. So this is simply called a class-based view. So to do this, I'll demonstrate by creating a new view. So I'll call this car view and this is going to inherit from something called view which you get from django.views so from django.views import view so note this is a class instead of a function so inside of this class I'm going to define a couple of methods one method is going to be a get method And as you can see, this get method takes in requests in addition to self because I'm using a class. And I'll also define a post method. So I'm sure as you can guess, the get method will get run when there's a get request and the post method will get run when there is a post request. So I'll just use the values from the car here. So in the get request, I have form being instantiated. So form equals car form and then I am rendering the template so I pass in the context so form equals form and then return render request car.html and then the context and then for the posts, what I'm doing is, in this particular case, I'm using the instance still, so I'll just continue doing that. So car equals car objects get pk equals two. And then I instantiate the form using requests dot post. And then also the instance, let me put that in there, instance equals car and then I'm checking if the form is valid print the name of the car and then save that car and then I'm adding that form to the context and I render okay so there we have the car view and now for the URLs I need to do things a little bit differently because I am using a class based view so I'm importing my view from views and I'll create another path so I'll call this um, car underscore class and instead of just typing views dot car view like I have here and kind of similar to how I have the car there's one extra step that I need to take I need to put as view here because by default it doesn't get accepted as a view until you add this as view so now let's see if everything works the same so I'll go to car class and I see I have the form show up. So it's the same as car, except looks a little different. What I'll do, well, it's using the same template. So now I'll change the name of the car because I am using that instance. So let's see, Sintra Nissan 2017. I hit submit 
If I go to the admin dashboard, go to cars, I see the Sentra has updated what I had there before. It replaced the Camry. So if I go back to car class, I know that everything is working correctly with my form. So I simply changed it to a class-based view, but it's still working the same as the function-based view. But an additional advantage to class-based views is that you can kind of reuse things across the methods. So as we see, uh, we're still using the car form. Uh, we're still using the same template. So I can kind of declare those outside of the two methods and use them in a more generic way. So one thing I can do is I can declare the form class. So form class equals car form. And then instead of using car form here, I can use self dot form class. And then I can do the same thing here. So instead of car form, I have self dot form class. I can do the same thing with the model. I can say the model is car and I can do self dot model and it behaves the same. I can do the same thing with the template name. Example slash car dot HTML and then replace that here with self dot template name and self template name. And as we'll see, this will actually work in exactly the same way. So new name, Challenger, Dodge, 2008, submit. Everything seems to be working. I see the Challenger here. If I go to admin, I see the Challenger has replaced the Sentra. So by using class-based views, I can kind of save some typing a little bit where it comes to things that are used across the same, across different methods, I should say, but they use the same information. Like the same template name is used across both Git and Post. Uh, the same form is used across Git and Post. In this particular case, the car is only used in one, but if I wanted to use the car in the Git, I could as well. And of course you have the methods that make it a little more clear on the separation between the, the two different types of requests. Of course, I can add like a delete method. I can add a patch method, a put method if I wanted to. But in this case, since I'm only using a basic form, I have git and post. So it's up to you which approach you want to take. As you can see, there's not that big of a difference. The class space view is actually a little more code. Where you save on code is where things get more and more complicated. So in a very simple example, uh, the thing that is supposed to make things simpler actually makes it more complicated. But as this function would grow, then it would make more sense to move to a class-based view. In this course, I'm only going to cover function-based views for simplicity purposes, but just know that converting between a function-based view and a class-based view isn't too difficult to do. It's pretty easy to reason about. It's just a different way of organizing your code, and if you prefer to use class-based views, I recommend that you try converting my function-based views to class-based views and see how well it works out for you.